We performed a single center study looking at abortions performed at Johns Hopkins to women with sickle cell disease. And the reason that we did this was that there's only one paper that we were able to identify in the literature um, on abortion and sickle cell disease. And we're living through an unprecedented moment of restricted access to abortion for women with, for women around this country. And we wanted to understand um, what are the needs of pregnant of people with sickle cell disease pursuing abortion um, uh, to define sort of the, the, the safety process profile and the procedural risks. Um, and so we examined uh, retrospectively uh, from 2013 to 2022, our electronic uh, medical records, we extracted patients with sickle cell disease ages 18 to 55 who had had an abortion. And we looked at their patient demographics, pregnancy information, sickle cell characteristics, healthcare utilization, and abortion information, um, including the type of abortion, anesthesia and steroid use, transfusion needs, um, and post-abortion um, complications. Um, we identified 19 subjects who had had 27 abortions in the Johns Hopkins system, and the median age at the time of abortions was 24 years. Um, we didn't know the genotype of all of the subjects, but 56% uh, of them had SS or S beta null. Um, and that was the, um, the same number as had, the, had that many abortions. 56% um, of the abortions were to 56% of women with S S C SS disease or S beta null. Um, and at the time of abortion, um, the hemoglobin levels in these patients were 8.9%. Um, and about 50% of the patients were taking um, some kind of disease modifying therapy at the time of the abortion. The majority of the abortions in our care system were managed with a with a dilatation and curatage or dilatation and evacuation procedure that was less than 30 minutes. Uh, the median gestational age at the time of care was 10 weeks. And um, and seven subjects who underwent a procedural abortion had steroid exposure. Most of the reason for that steroid exposure was to, as, to use steroids as an anti-emetic. Um, and the complication rates um, for procedural abortions were 26%, and most of these were pain crises. However, the baseline pain crisis rate in this population was very high. And so interpretation of the, the abortion as having a causal contributor to pain is, is very difficult to parse. It is not our institutional practice to transfuse people with sickle cell disease before pursuing abortion care, um, but we did note that several patients did have um, a transfusion afterwards, most of whom uh, required transfusions as a routine component of their care, and it was not necessarily associated with the abortion. Um, so in, in our cohort, in conclusion, most of the abortions performed were procedural and required brief anesthesia, which does not routinely require prophylactic transfusion, and in this cohort, we saw no indication that there was an increased need for transfusion after abortion. Steroids, which are a known risk factor for painful crises in sickle cell disease, were commonly used as an anti-emetic before procedural abortions. Of course, this is something that can be addressed with care teams to help educate about the risks associated with steroids for this patient population and the avoidance of their use as an anti-emetic whenever possible. And of course, some limitations to this study. We didn't capture uh, abortions that happened outside of our healthcare system. And we know that larger studies are needed to define optimal management and, and inform abortion care, but we don't see any barriers for uh, related to sickle cell treatment that should delay um, bringing women who, need, who require abortions to care when necessary.